Hello. In this presentation, I will discuss what happens within the photogrammetry software, especially in terms of how does the software determine the interior and exterior orientation parameters. First, some terminology. The interior orientation is sometimes called the camera calibration. And it includes parameters that are inside the camera, such as focal length, principal point offset, radial lens distortions. Generally, in any given project, all images will have the same interior orientation parameters, largely because we're probably only using one camera and lens for that project. In terms of exterior orientation, it is the camera's position in 3D space, its coordinates, if you will, and the orientation of that lens with respect to a coordinate system. Each image in a project should have a unique exterior orientation. We shouldn't have any images having exactly the same exterior orientation. When we do a camera calibration, the most important thing we determine is the camera lens focal length. And we need to know this thing to about six or more significant digits. Everything um, that is produced through the photogrammetry software is going to be scaled according to that focal length. So it becomes a very important parameter. All lenses uh, have distortions. There's no perfect lens. Um, and that means the image that's collected on the sensor deviates from what a perfect lens would have generated. So in addition to um, determining the precise focal length, um, 3DM analyst and 3DM Kelbcam will find uh, parameters that will correct the deviations from an ideal lens. And these are also um, elements of the interior orientation for that camera lens combination. And so some of these parameters are listed here. Um, the principal point offset, uh, it's, a, it's a, a distance, a physical distance that, that compensates for the optical center of the lens not aligning perfectly with the center of the image sensor. In, in two different coordinates um, in terms of the image sensor. Uh, we also have distortions. Um, it's a polynomial function. Um, so we have these K1 through 4 radial lens distortions that are determined. There's also a decentering distortion, P1 and P2. It compensates for misalignment of the lens elements with each other. A typical lens on a camera is not just one piece of glass. There's multiple lenses. And uh, they're not perfectly aligned with each other, and that can be corrected through the P1 and P2 parameters. And then there is the scaling factors, B1 and B2, that um, compensate for differential scaling in the X and Y directions, and that also compensates for the non-perpendicularity of the image axes. And then if you correct for all of these parameters, the the typical deviation after calibration is about 0.1 to 0.2 pixels. And for a good quality lens, that deviation before calibration was probably 0.3 to 0.6 or even larger in terms of its deviation. So it may not sound like it's a big change, but um, the software is made, um, can make those corrections and you end up getting a more accurate uh, model from the photogrammetry software after implementing the proper camera calibration. So in um, 3DM Analyst, the, the unknowns to be solved um, increases to at least eight or, or preferably a lot more to solve for these um, unknown parameters. And generally, um, we're starting with um, hundreds of points, not just the minimum 18 to solve for the calibration.
The software does that automatically. 3DM Calib Cam can perform a calibration of the lens without control by using additional images. Structure from Motion Software follows the same kind of strategy. By having lots of images of the same object, um, the processing algorithm will perform a, a lens calibration. And by having many images, we can um, not only calculate the, um, the calibration parameters, the interior orientations, but we can start to make an assessment of their accuracy. Ideally, we would like to have some control points captured in the images um, and, and scattered across the full extent of the images when we perform a calimera calibration. And it's best practice to, to shoot um, both in landscape and portrait mode, so you're rotating the camera, so that you capture these ground control points in different um, quadrants, if you will, of the image. Once you've done your calibration, you end up generating a, 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 a .cal file, and that file can um, be exported out of CalibCam and, and imported into 3DM Analyst if, if needed. This is a, um, a small little rock uh, face that has, I think, 25 small targets um, essentially glued onto the rock. And each of those targets was precisely um, surveyed in with a total station. So the rock face has got a lot of texture. The targets are scattered um, widely on, the, on that rock face. And this particular rock face was used to calibrate a many um, relatively short, land, short focal length lenses. Um, so a 24, 35, 50 millimeter lenses. And uh, I used this rock face to calibrate some of my cameras and many other people have taken advantage of this rock face for that same purpose. So that's that's kind of what you can do um, in the field to calibrate your own lens by having um, a, a well textured um, surface with some known ground control points on it. The um, uh, the configuration of that ground control is, is important. We, we want to make sure they're widely spread. Uh, we want coordinates in all three dimensions. We don't want any of these to be collinear, which we, want, we don't want these targets or ground control points lying on a straight line. We don't even want them to be coplanar. So a lot of variations um, in their spatial geometry. And after you've um, performed a interior uh, orientation in Calib Cam, you can check the calibration report to see if everything is working working well. There is some uh, there's different ways of doing these calibrations. There is the free network and control network uh, modes, and so if you're doing a relative orientation, um, that's also called a free network. So you're doing something without any control points, no known coordinates. And so you can you can process the images in this free network, and it'll um, essentially assume a arbitrary local coordinate system, and it will definitely not be registered to any real world coordinates. And and you would need typically a scale bar or some, some known distance to help in that regard. So even if you don't have ground control points, you still need a scale bar to obtain the correct scaling, especially for that focal length. The better way is to do it with a control network. It uses control points with known coordinates, and it registers the, the, end, end the model and the uh, interior orientation parameters um, very, very carefully. So that uh, image of a rock face with a number of targets on it would be used for a control network. Uh, if you're lucky and you have a object with many ground control points uh, already on it, with 
good texture. You can do a control network um, bundle adjustment to get absolute orientation and you get a much better um, camera calibration. So the image I showed earlier with a rock face with a number of targets on it with known coordinates would be used to do a control network absolute orientation. So you do the interior orientations first. You calibrate your camera lens first. And then the next step would be to do exterior orientations. And so if you're given um, image coordinates of, of several points on two or more images, and knowing the 3D ground coordinates of those points, we can determine the camera's exterior orientations. At least three known locations or control points that do not lie in a straight line are required to, for an absolute orientation. And that means for 3DM analysts, if you're only using, because you, because you only can use two images, you only load in two images, we need to have three known coordinates captured in both of those images. For Calib Cam, we can use um, any number of images, and it's often better to have many ground control points. Remember that image before uh, of that rock face, I had 25 known coordinates. More locations are better for accuracy and redundancy. The software uh, uses an algorithm called the least squares bundle block adjustment. So the least squares solution is, is one that minimizes the squares of error of each observation in terms of their individual sigmas. And the bundle uh, refer to rays connecting each point in 3D with the associated point on the image sensor. So those red rays and that little sketch below shows light rays passing through a camera lens and being recorded on a sensor. And they, the, the rays resemble a bundle of straws. And typically we are not just using three rays, we're using hundreds of rays um, to solve for the interior and exterior orientations of the camera. So given the image coordinates of at least seven points in two images, we can determine the camera's exterior orientations and the 3D ground coordinates of all of those points, all of those seven points in an, arbit in an arbitrary coordinate system if you're doing a relative orientation. Of course, um, the software will attempt to use far more than seven points, so you have redundancy. So if you, do, if you did a relative orientation, um, you, you'd have to scale, rotate, and shift the resulting model to get it into the desired coordinate system. Um, the process of doing a bundle adjustment actually starts first with um, um, finding an initial solution, an initial approximate solution to, the, to the, this complex mathematical um, equation. That's, that, that is the bundle adjustment. And the, um, the approximate solution is found using um, a, a method called resection. So the resection uh, runs very quickly. It uses the points that are matched between the images and it finds an approximate solution. And when you're running um, a pair of photographs um, only in Analyst, the uh, software does that resection uh, before it performs a or bundle adjustment. However, if you're if you're if you're working with um, Calib Cam, and normally you're using more than two camera stations, and certainly more than two photographs, if you're using Calib Cam, the, the Calib Cam software separates the process uh, into a resection first. And then you follow it with a bundle adjustment. And once the solution is, is found, you can, you can test that solution and possibly 
add or delete some points. And you don't need to do that resection again. You, you simply have to do another bundle adjustment. And you, and you gradually converge on a solution that you're, has no air. All the points are matching very nicely, and, and then you're finished. So if you back up, so what, what do we do uh, as inputs? We need um, image coordinates of all ground control points. And the software will, will identify what's called auto relative only points, points that are common in multiple images. So that's an input. You want as an input a interior orientation that's already been being performed. So you have the camera calibration loaded into the software. Um, the image coordinate sigmas and the, um, are, are, are calculated automatically, but it's an input. The ground control port, um, coordinates, um, if you're using them, need to be input. You, the ground control points could be those on a target on, the, let's say, a rock face. You could also import a known camera location coordinates if you have them. And then there's there's uh, sort of the errors on all of those those um, those data sets. I mean, there's every every survey is not 100%. There's an expected error. So, for example, on a total station measuring um, the center of those white dots, you might expect a, a plus or minus one or two millimeters error on each of the coordinates each of the X, Y, Z components of those coordinates. That gets fed in. You end up doing the resection, then the, then the bundle adjustment. And as output, you, you um, obtain the adjusted image coordinates for all the relative only points, adjusted ground control coordinates. And so the software actually um, says, you know, here's the, here's the ground control coordinates that you gave as input, the software will say, ah, I think the survey has made some small mistakes and it'll actually adjust those coordinates ever so slightly and provide an even better um, coordinate for the ground control points. And of course, you get the exterior orientations, which is the um, location and orientation of every, of every um, camera that took an image in the project. And then you got the uh, also, the, the ground coordinates for all the relative only points. These are all outputs that come out of the, um, the bundle adjustment for exterior orientations. And you end up seeing something that might look like this. So there's a list of the images. There's a root mean squared um, kind of error measured in terms of pixels in the x, y um, plane in the sensor, um, and there's a root mean squared sort of point um, pixel error. And if, yours, if your uh, end result looks something like this, where the values are less than about 0.3 to 0.5, you've, you've done a good job. You've got a pretty good exterior orientation. And you can click on the um, view HM HTML report and get a lot more details about that bundle adjustment. And so if you don't have this, you've probably made a mistake somewhere along the line, your, or your photographs were not collected in, 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 in good positions. You didn't have the camera stations appropriately set up, or you've got um, survey errors and ground control points. So there's lots of different um, reasons why you could have larger errors than 0.3 to 0.5 pixels, but when things are working well, this is what you end up seeing. So I um, hope that gives you a little bit of an appreciation for what's happening within both Caleb Cam and Analyst when you're doing those um, interior and exterior orientations, either in the free or the control mode. Thank you.